Welcome back to Cup Chairs. Today we're diving into the journey of a modern rock band that blends the old with the new, featuring a cosmopolitan lineup and a sound influenced by legends such as Led Zeppelin, ACDC, and the Rolling Stones. I chat with Michael from Keystone, who shares his story of starting up, creating music, and overcoming the challenges of the modern music scene. From writing lyrics inspired by life's moments to the hustle of juggling gigs around the world, this is an episode packed with insight, passion, and some good old rock and roll energy. Welcome to In The Chair With. Uh, Michael, Keystone, welcome to In The Chair With. Uh, how are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you very much for having yeah. us. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's this attempt four now, isn't it? We've had, uh, we've had all, all the issues. I had a fire alarm once. You, you, you were blue, uh, graphically, which we couldn't yeah. resolve. Uh, we finally made it. So an absolute pleasure for anyone that kind of has, uh, isn't aware of your band. Um, do you want to kind of just sort of talk us through what it is you do? Uh, we're a original rock band, uh, sort of, uh, modern twist on classic rock. Mm -hmm. um like into a bit of led zeppelin like into a bit of acdc stones the who mm -hmm. uh, just original material we've been going for about two years four piece bands i sing and write most well pretty much all the songs but a drummer from greece we've got a lead guitarist from rio in brazil and we've just started a new, with a new bass player now he's from sydney wow sydney he's from perth actually so we're quite cosmopolitan as a band. Yeah, yeah. But how? Yeah, how did that? Go? I mean, are they all living in London, or I'm assuming yeah, they're all they're all living in London. Um, during lockdown or whatever it was, or around twenty, I started with a couple of other fellas. I just put an advert out. I hadn't played music in about ten years, and I've been doing anything for about ten years. I, I was uh, in relationships, should we say? Yeah, and, uh, busy working, busy trying to get everything in life together as people do, and then that all went awry. And then I put an advert up, and I thought, well, let's see how it goes. So I had about five, or six, well, I had loads of songs, but I never sung in a band before. I played in bands with uh, other people, and I wrote most of the songs, but I'd never sing. Mm -hmm. So I thought, like the first couple of rehearsals I had with them, they'd go, "I'll oh, clear off. We don't want to have anything to do with this." It seems to have progressed from that, and then I've we've got like uh, more. I keep getting like professional, better musicians. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Better musicians than me, anyway. Yeah. So, where did your musical journey kind of start before this ten-year hiatus? <laughs> uh, I was I was always mucking around with the guitar. Um, always interesting, like songs how they're written and just writing songs. But I was just always just mucking around with it and one of my old school friends uh said you want to join the bands and we were in a band called coast with uh two girl singers uh girl drummer girl singer i wrote most of the songs uh my other mate was on rhythm guitar i was playing lead then and we had a bass player from london and then as normal bands do that went all awry <laughs> so I didn't do anything for about four, four or five years. And then I started working and I met someone at work, said he was a singer. So we set up a band called The Alibi, which was sort of going places for a little bit. A little bit. Um, we were we were doing the Metro Club. We were in the, the Metro paper saying, we hope this band is going to last for a while. I think I just had enough and I went traveling again. So, okay. Oh, where did you, then, where did you go? It, uh, I either did an around the world trip or well, I've lived in Australia, I lived in Holland, I've lived in America. So, yeah, I've been around a little bit, been to a few places. <laughs> no, that's 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 all good. Um, so what what is it that uh, you, you you write, as you said? pretty much for most of the bands all of the songs all of the lyrics all that kind of stuff um yeah. so what about what about the kind of the writing side what what do you what kind of topics do you cover where does that come from because it's, it's something it's it's one thing to be able to pick up a guitar knock out some chords and create rhythm and and, and have be creative that side but then when you're responsible for words and the dynamics and the tone that you're going to set it's another it's another uh talent altogether um and that usually comes from special place somewhere 
but it is different because if like you can muck around with chords quite a lot and then you get a little selection of chords and then you get an idea in your head and you'll start writing from them but then like it's whatever words that you'd like from that you say well what can i make a story about with that and then do i have to change it in the chorus or change it in the verse or this social love um social love and then some of it is just drinking nonsense do you know what i mean when we go out at night and the other thing is when you start is like you go out at night and someone starts saying phrases that you've never heard before where you go yeah. places like well, we don't say that but they say that we don't say this we don't say that and you sort of get a turn of phrase and you think oh I quite like that and then you can build build things from that onwards mm, mm. awesome so you're very like you're very socially aware you're always kind of looking for bits and pieces is that part of your craft yeah yeah and the way people say things do you know what i mean mm -hmm. say things. well sometimes you just you you see you read something you, and you like the way a few words have been put together or the way it's been explained you think oh that's a good idea what, what what's your best kind of thing can you remember any kind of anything lyrical your best sort of example of where that's kind of fleshed out into practice well i like nonsensical things and all so we've, we've got a, a, a song called man out of me and i like the line um well there's a couple of lines i'm ready born ready i wasn't ready for you so hot my jaw dropped she stripped the paint from my blues mm -hmm. one look i was hooked like a clown on a noose yeah okay i see where you're going I see where you're going with that but they're not all like that <laughs> <clears throat> so i as uh for my research it looked like you had what was it like three singles out with keystone yeah because our first our first uh we done we done an album in three days i think we've done 10 songs or eight songs in three days in in the mill hill studio and they were going really well they were going really well except for the bass player didn't turn up the first day because he was too hung over and he was um <laughs> yeah he was a little bit worse aware and then after the third day after the recording finished he asked to turn up and I said well it's finished now but the recording was going really well but i don't know what the sound engineer did or whatever happened there but when he compressed it, it was like it was like we weren't playing with rock guitars. It was like we were playing with acoustic guitars or you've got something that you buy from Argos with, with no sound in it or anything. Even the drums sounded like it was like one of them little, you know, the little <laughs> funky things that you wind up, the little little ones sort of tiny, the drum sound, everything had gone. So we sort of stopped we tried to get that better and better and better and it just wasn't happening because there's there was a couple of good songs on that that's um that's the mill uh buns lane uh ep but we couldn't we couldn't improve on them so then we waited for a while and then we had a load more songs so we didn't we didn't want to really go back on some of the old ones so we've done all the new ones so we've, we've got another song that's going to come out soon slow down honey which i've just got to get cover um but we've we've sort of released probably about six six to seven songs soon but then there's others not been recorded as you know you you go every time you go to a studio someone does something different they want you to record clean mm -hmm. i like i think we're we're a lot better when we play live as a band the sound it sounds better and when you go in a recording studio and you hear it to me it sounds very calculated and cold sometimes yeah because you're you're kind of you're just in a in a dry chamber aren't you yeah. uh, and the the audio is exposed and uh, um uh, maybe that's maybe that's testament to maybe an element of your character um is it a fact that you kind of enjoy this process with the end result being the buzz and the interaction yeah and, and the noise and the crowds and yeah the yeah. laughs and the jokes well you 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 know when everything's going but if you're sort of like you know if you try a lead and it's there's no distortion or there's no reverb on it it doesn't sound the same yeah you know, it's like it's like if you played you you went and watch acdc at, at wembley and they've done all their hits with acoustic guitars it's not going to be the same thing 
you know what I mean? And that annoys, it sort of annoys me because then afterwards you have to go over again with the guitar sound and you're going, well, we're playing it live in the studio. Why can't we just have the effects and then do a cold guitar afterwards? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know exactly where you want to change. You know. Yeah, but it sounds a bit of an odd. Well. Sounds a bit of an odd experience because you can have a DI in. This is my thinking. Um, you can have a direct input, which will give the into the, into the sound disc, which will give the engineer um the clarity and the rawness he so likes. But you could also have a, a like a return send going to your effects. But so your all your monitors. Uh, it just seems you know. Uh, I know I cool. know what you mean, but that's always seemed to have gone wrong because someone wants to do because we went to the first one and it went wrong and I was like oh, I'm a bit bit wary about this now. Then I wanted to do it with another fella, but we couldn't we couldn't get him. And the day we wanted to get him, our lead guitarist went on a lost weekend and come back six months later. So oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, so this this uh, sounds like there's some stories here. Uh, I mean, I suppose we've had you've had a number of bands. Uh, you've been out. It sounds like you've been out and about in London uh, quite a while. Um, you must have some rock and roll stories for sure, no? <laughs> got a few. Got, got any, any you care to share? Huh? <laughs> any you care to share? Nah, not at the moment. Oh dear. Oh, okay, because it's it's uh, it's always good to hear so, it's, uh, some crazy stuff that, that go on. Uh, I'm starting to develop 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 and just going out and fo photoing and videoing bands and and meeting up with people that I've interviewed. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a wild life. It's a, it's a bit of a bit of a funny one being a being a musician. Yeah, it'd, it'd be nice if it was full time. Mm, mm, mm. Your electrician, are you electrician by trade as, as well? Is it not? Yeah okay is that is that a sort of a, is that a passion kind of lead into playing around with guitars and and tech and stuff or no you just, no you've got to get a job and you've got to earn a living yeah. haven't you yeah yeah no that's the tough one well music isn't oh. isn't always going to pay for it is it uh well this uh this I, d I don't know about you but if you if i was a promoter mm -hmm. i'd be promoting places not expecting bands to promote places all the time. And I find that, I, I never knew that before because when uh, when we used to play before, the, the promoters used to take care of the venues and the venues were popular that you were playing. You wanted to play in the popular venues and they were always busy. They were always busy on a Friday, Saturday and Wednesday and this, that. But that, it seems to have changed now where the promoter just wants you to do it and take the money, mm -hmm. so, which I found uh, I find a bit, odd because if you call yourself a promoter you, you've got to promote if you call yourself an electrician you go around someone's house and say sorry i can't do that I'm a yeah, yeah. You know? yeah 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 um i mean i think that there's a lot of this in 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 the in the music industry at a lot of levels and it applies to record labels as well um you know there's, there's a lot of people kind of going about walk they're talking the talk but not walking the walk and yeah. and it's a shame because you know decent honest kind of hard-working musicians kind of suffer and lose out and as do audiences for good fun nights um yeah. uh but uh, i've met promoters that have been absolutely fantastic and i've met promoters that are basically just non-existent I mean, they yeah. they they put their money into producing a flyer and they never got out the house to deliver them you know <laughs> yeah. yes you can't but, do that I, I heard you can't do that nowadays you can't you can't put flyers out because the council, if the council see the flyers and they're all over the place, they'll find you. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. Obviously, I never heard anything of the sort. Some like um, Camden High Road was the one someone told me. No, you can't hand out flyers in Camden High Road. I was like, Camden High Road used to be full of flyers. Yeah, well, probably it's the case today that you'd need a special license from the local authority. You'd need a waste disposal. <laughs> you'd need a waste disposal policy in case anyone dropped one. Yeah. Um, uh, you need insurance in case anyone slipped on a flyer. You know, uh -huh. to protect the council from any legalities, uh, and, and all for the cheap premium, affordable premium of five thousand pounds before you'd even step foot on the place. Probably, you exactly. Know. Yeah, <laughs> wonder why everything's closing down. Yeah, yeah, no, indeed, indeed. I apologise for the interruption in proceedings, but here is a message from one of our sponsors, My Tees. Hey there, music lovers, are you guilty about where your band merch comes from? Well, we've got you covered, literally. Allow me 
me to introduce you to Mighties, the home of sustainable, eco-friendly clothing that doesn't compromise on style or burn a hole in your wallet. Whether you're looking for organic cotton t-shirts or recycled band merch, Mighties is all about circular fashion, which means keeping products out of landfills and on your back where they belong. From ethically made t-shirts to one of a kind prints, every purchase is kind to the planet. Supporting your favorite bands? Why not do it in style with eco-conscious choices that reflect your love for music and the environment? My Tees is 100% plastic free, vegan approved, and only works with fair trade certified partners. It's time to look good and feel good about what you're wearing. Check out mytees.uk today and upgrade your merch game sustainably. Um, so kind of what's 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 next uh you said you've got you've got six songs coming out i'm like how often do you gig like how often are you out and about we, we've got a gig tonight we're playing the good mixer tonight oh, okay yeah mm -hmm. so we're doing, we're doing that tonight we're there was a gig in east london but that got cancelled so uh there's possibly a gig in paris oh wow okay uh we had a night at the Water Rats, and then a Paris band come over, and uh, they said, "If you let us play here, we'll, we'll get you a gig in Paris." So that's another thing in the line. But uh, our drummer, he's got a sailing boat company or whatever in Greece, so he has to go away for two weeks. So sometimes you can't do gigs. Um, so it, it just work it around everyone else. That's what you do, really. But work yeah. it around everyone. So we try and do two, a, a couple of months. But sometimes we're doing three or four in a week. Do you know what I mean? Over two weeks. Yeah, we try, we try to boot. We try and rehearse once a week. But, you know, it's here. Uh, it's fine. We've played most of the venues, trying to find better venues or places. I quite like the Good Mixer because it's, it's free and there's always a good crowd in there and there's always a good bunch of musicians in there and everything else. Uh, the Hope and Anchor is a really good venue. Um, the Water Rats is another good venue. Yes, so yeah. I was, there, I was there Sunday. There was a couple of friends in a couple of punk bands. There was some really good punk bands there and all. Yeah, we get a. I get a lot of material um, from some of those venues that you mentioned. One of them, uh, I had, I didn't know, but uh, when I replay this, uh, I should go and have a have a look. There's always uh, always something good coming out of these venues. Uh, London has some some great some great venues. Uh, I wish I kind of discovered them sooner. I'm I'm more Medway based. Um, we have a bit of stuff going on, but yeah. but, but before then, I was right out on the coast um, of the southeast coast. It's like dead. The music scene is just what well, um, over Essex. No, 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 Fanit side. Um, Fanit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh, just... Fanit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My ex. <laughs> My ex cousin is was the what do you call it? The politician or whatever for Fanit. Craig. Oh, Craig McKinley. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I've. I, I remember him going around town. I don't think he was very popular at the time. <laughs> he did he do something? He did something. What did what did he do? I don't think there's anything salacious. He was he was he was he was uh against uh he was going for Fanit with Nigel Farage, wasn't he? And yes. Farage, yeah. Farage was getting a lot of a lot of TV, a lot of publicity that I didn't think he was gonna win, but he did. <laughs> So, you know, but he's, uh, I only seen recently, because I haven't spoken to my ex, but I only seen recently, he got a really bad disease and he's lost he, oh. from his knees knees down and his arms down. Oh, so Jesus. Got, yeah, so was, I, I was really shocked when I seen that. Mm. And, and it wasn't thrombosis, it was some other disease that you get, and if it starts spreading, it's like it's like gangrene, isn't it? Oh, right, Jesus. Something like that. And, um, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah I, don't wish that stuff on, on anyone. No, you know? no, no, no. Yeah. It's pretty bad, that. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was taken aback. I was really taken aback when I seen that. So, so I, someone said to me about it, and I was seeing on YouTube, and I was like, oh, but, but that's politics anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different world, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to play around in that world. I think it would just suck the life out of you, you know. Oh, um, yeah. and probably you did leave it with, with not a lot of pre appreciation. You know, every politician goes in and they're appreciated in the in the beginning and they come back they come out ragged and hated and they whether they've done something or not, you know, it seems to be equal treatment. So I don't think it's a particularly um uh satisfying you know career when, when you retire from it and look at it in retrospect i don't know i could be wrong but not for me and on, on the subject on the you've subject, got to be a certain type of person for that stuff yeah yeah i think you've got to be a certain type of animal uh yes i don't think it's not me um I'd, I'd be told off all the time of the way my mouth runs so um yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me um so we're talking about you know gangrenous limbs and all this kind of stuff you know um you've been doing this for what well, some, some a few years shall we say um uh, one thing that oft, i'm often kind of conscious about now i'm kind of hit my 40s and i'm kind of running around london and behaving like a 20 year old again in this in this role uh is the kind of one is balancing time and age across like yourself you have your, your plumbing business you you're gigging three three or four times every couple of weeks you're rehearsing once a week where do you find the time to write does age influence your writing um does age kind of scare you as a musician from, as a musician at all <laughs> someone's just going That's uh, right. um no not really no no oh fair you just you just you're just straight at life absolutely fine no, not a concern in the world what? i don't know what's to worry about age um time you, you make your own time you know uh working on see how, how much do you want a career at work that's the other thing like a lot of people start off you start in your 20s and things like that you start working you want you want money 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 and, mm -hmm. and then and then you get to a certain age and you go how much am I, who am i really working for me or the government yeah yeah no absolutely um one of the things uh, that i've said recently is you know it's better to work a 24 hour week like big do music stuff um and be mentally well as opposed to slave yourself for eight, 10, 12 hours. Even the normal days for employees are getting longer and longer. Uh, yeah, and, be, and be very unwell. But you understand if you're like, I've got my own business. So to start your own business is not, it's not a 24 hour week. It's like if, if there's work there when the sun shines, you've got to make hay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. You can be working six, seven days a week to build your business up and it'll take you two years. And you could be start some days you'll have no work but then other days you'll be up at you'll be at six o'clock and you won't get back to 11 o'clock because everyone's ringing you on that day you've got to do you've got to do that to start up your business but as you get get to a point in your business then you know like everything you can sort of hopefully pick and choose but that doesn't always happen no 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 I, so it takes, it takes some guts to kind of go out into the self-employed but i think it's it's a much it's a much more mental satisfying even if there are kind of risks involved and tides and ebbs and flow but i think it's a better lifestyle yeah well it's, uh, it's either that or you tow the line yeah that's it yeah, yeah. I, I, do, 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 do you strike me as a character perhaps not it's not cut out for towing the line you know no office, and, uh, office work and bosses weren't really my thing <laughs> do you do you in any way regret the 10 year hiatus from the the music writing i just had enough with the last two bands i i was moving i was building my business i was trying to you know sort my life out instead of being traveling around and mucking around for the first <laughs> 10 years so yeah at some stage you've got to tow your own line so yeah Okay, so was there was there like a funnel process that kind of came to you, to you to the realization that you had to start towing your own line? You know, did it get a bit hairy? Did it get a bit wobbly? It's called a mortgage, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first thing you yeah. put out the rent in places and paying people rent, and then it's you know, oh, I've got to get this. So you're going to have to tow the line a bit, aren't you? Mm, mm, mm. yeah no indeed Although, well, you put all that money into it and you lose it then it's what did i do that for 
Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I bet, well, property, I mean, that's just another conversation entirely. Uh, get, starting a mortgage now, I, I, I fear anyone, you know, for trying in a first time know. situation. It's madness now. It's madness now. Yeah, madness. I, uh, anyone in London. But, but, but is the, what is the, the wage in London is still 30 grand or something like that. Yeah, it? yeah, the yeah. Average, average wage in London. What can you get with 30 grand? Yeah, that that's the average wage, but for all the people that are kind of regular and normal and submit the censuses, the people that there are people that tons, thousands of people that are just on you know barely minimum wage, barely forty hours a week because companies are re- taking things to zero hours contracts and all this kind of stuff. You know, I think the number is probably you know less, ab- probably less than thirty. Well, that's um, an average. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Average yeah. Is- where yeah. the highest goes and the lowest goes. Yeah, yeah. The problem is it only takes about 10 people out of a pool of 20 at super massive money to skew yeah. the average for the real people that are suffering at the bottom. So, I don't even think you can get a garage with it. Uh, you probably can't yeah. get a garage with that. Could you in some places in London? Yeah, no, no. Um, I was I was looking. I'm a renter, I'm afraid. I've never had the sense to kind of start on the property ladder, and I'm 41 now. I don't think it's going to happen. Um who knows? You never know. Might become a millionaire next year. Uh, but uh, keep doing uh, this. You never know. Yeah, yeah. You never know. It, it's certainly in the right space. Uh, at least I'm well. That's the, that's the main thing. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah it, enjoy that's it. what you do. It's never a day's work, is it? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but I was looking at. Uh, I thought, oh, I f- fancy a flat up here. You see what see what the rental what the prices are. And I was like, fuck me. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's quite uh, quite uh, uh, much more expensive, so I don't envy people trying to Where kind of work. In so I'm in Medway. Where's Medway? So uh, Rochester, Chatham. All oh, right, okay. All of that down that way. So it's like like forty minutes on the train. Yeah, yeah. It's close enough. This place is busy enough. It's you know, it's uh, it, it, it will do. It was not far back in the seaside where I was before. So cool. um, that's uh, that, that that's dead for anyone trying to sort of push. So at least here you've kind of got the London busyness, but without all of the overcrowding and about all the cost. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's nice. Um, right. Uh, so for, for just kind of wrapping up, is a question I always kind of pose to um people I interview is for musicians that are either kind of perhaps looking at giving up or are getting frustrated with like a lack of success or they're not getting their stuff heard and they're just kind of having a moment uh from your experience going through everything that you've been through what's your kind of nuggets of wisdom you pass on get interviewed by ben (laughs) was it any good (laughs) (laughs) Uh, if you enjoy it you know something will something might turn something might happen as long as you enjoy it and you keep going at it that's it yeah you know, i am like you go it's like everything in life sometimes first it's like the first time you ever start a job right and you go oh this is really good i'm getting money now i've got my own little bit of independence and then after a year you go i want more money i don't like this this is no good i've got to go somewhere else and it's the same it's the same music you're in it's like the first time I got, I can realise when I got in a band and I was actually singing and everything else, and it was like the band was going well, and we were getting festival gigs and we were getting asked to play places. We weren't even, we weren't even pursuing it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, when that sort of turns your head and you go, oh, this is really good. I really enjoy it. But then you also get into a point where it's repetition because people leave and you've got a get the set right and you're not new, doing new stuff and it's sort of that repetition it's like anything repetition in life you get bored yeah. of you know, every mm-hmm. day Human but, nature. Um, but then after a while it's like when you do live gigs and you can see you get a bit of a reaction from the crowd and just that and the other and you go i really like this can't give up it's a great hobby it's good for the soul good for the mind it is it is it is cool wise words and uh it's been a pleasure speaking with you what, what's the next release when's that coming or don't you know yet so i'm trying to get kate moss lookalike to be on the cover <laughs> i'm sorry i can't do it i'm fully booked <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh i'll be trying to sort that out our last release i think was um where's the love it was indeed that's quite got quite a groove to that i like that so that that picture i actually took that picture because the lead guitarist is in brazil mm-hmm. in rio 
we were in Rio. I was in Rio. He, we went over to South America for, I went over to South America last year for a little bit traveling. So I met him in Rio. So he's lived in Rio all his life. And he's never gone, his mum's never gone up Sugarloaf Mountain and the the other one, uh, Christ the Redeemer yep. Mountain. So we're on Sugarloaf and it, the, the day that we picked, it's covered in cloud, this, that and the other. So we're up there and we're going, oh, we might as well have a beer up here because it's, it's, you can't see anything from here. And he's going, oh, this is the highest I've ever had a beer in Brazil. So we're chatting along and this American geezer come and he goes, if you wait till quarter past one or whatever, he goes, all them clouds are going to disappear and you'll get a really good picture. And mm -hmm. that's, that's how that picture was taken. Fair, fair. Yeah, I'm looking at the album cover now. <laughs> so, cool, excellent. Well, uh, I think that's kind of, I've also, we could, we'll try and keep an eye on you if you kind of let us know where you're gigging. Um, and tonight. Oh, yeah, well, tonight. I'm not going to get this episode edited up tonight. I don't know, I might. It'd probably be by the time the, the gig is finished. But uh, uh, you're frequently about, uh, by all means, when you start releasing some singles and uh, and stuff, yeah, yeah. Pop, pop it in our inbox we'll share it um and uh you know hopefully we'll go, go on and use some more followers and i might even see you at a gig uh indeed because right. on my trips in london but it's been a, a pleasure to speak with you mark michael and you ben cheers cheers take it easy have a good afternoon easy. and you bye, bye, Thanks, bye. bye.